Hey, what's going on YouTube? Um, today I'm going to bring you guys the next part of the series, How to Breed Shrimp. And uh, today I want to talk about, you know, two different things. Uh, the first being TDS. Um, a lot of people have been asking questions and uh, been wanting me to go a little bit more in depth with it. And so I'm going to do that for you guys today. And the other thing is water changes. And, um, you know, you may laugh at that. You may be like, well, you know, water changes are pretty easy. But um, with shrimp, there's a lot you want to watch out for. And so I'll cover that stuff today. So first off, I'm going to go into TDS. And um, the big thing is, what is TDS? For you to actually understand TDS, you need to know what goes into it. And so it stands for Total Dissolved Solids. And um, the only thing TDS is really good for is for um, is for initial water changes. And it's when you have RO water, which is uh, should come out as zero TDS, meaning it has nothing in it. And then as you add in your remineralizer, it's going to increase the TDS because you're putting minerals and you know different kind of solids into the water. And so, um, so you put in your you know your mineralizer or whatever. Um, you put in enough to get to a GH of usually about six, depending on the species of shrimp you're trying to raise. And then you check your um, KH, you check your pH, you see where everything's at. And then uh, you test the TDS. And that will give you a reading of exactly where you want to be. And so for me that reading is about 200 to 230. And so I know when I add water into an aquarium, um, I want a TDS of 200 to 230. Now that doesn't mean the water in my aquarium is going to be, or is going to have a TDS of 230. Because it's not going to. Um, you know the fish poop different different things in the aquarium um, affect the water quality uh, they add different minerals to it they add different organic waste and um, you know a lot goes into your feeding them and so the TDS of your aquarium is going to be normally higher than uh, the TDS of the water that you're changing into it so that's something to uh, just watch out for and so the biggest thing is when you're using RO water and you're doing water changes um, evaporation is going to happen. If you have an open top, evaporation is going to be a big thing. And so, um, you know, one thing to watch out for is you always want to know when you add water into your aquarium what level it was at. And then when you go to do a water change the next time, you want to add pure RO water until you get back to that level that it was at. Because um, minerals and different things like that don't evaporate, just water does. And so you want to make sure that you're putting in the right RO water so that you're staying stable. And then um, the other big thing is when you're doing water changes, you know, you, you don't want to suck up the shrimp. You don't want to get the little babies. You don't want to kill them. And so uh, so what I do is I actually put a pantyhose. I cut off one of the leggings. I put it over my hose, and then I suck out the water that way. And uh, that seems to be the most effective way for me. And it, uh, you know, it eliminates uh, casualties when I'm doing water changes. And the other thing is temperature. When doing water changes, temperature is huge. Um, once I killed, uh, you know, I must have killed probably half of my tank of shrimp simply because I wasn't paying uh, I wasn't paying attention to temperature, and I ended up putting I think water was uh, you know 78 degrees, temperature of the tank was 72. It ended up jumping the temperature in the tank from 72 to 75 instantaneously. Uh, it sent all the shrimp into shock probably killed a, a good amount of them some of them rebounded but um you know it was just catastrophic i ended up having to uh to add colder water to it immediately and uh, bring the temperature back down and uh you know that eliminated some losses but you know i still had a lot of loss of shrimp because of that so temperature is huge um sorry i had something in my mouth but there's just a lot to watch out for and then the last thing is, you know, how often do you want to do water changes? You know, how often is important? I personally do, I do one water change a week, and I do a 20% water change. And most people say you should only do a 10% water change, and that's simply because you don't want the quality of the water to change drastically. Um, I'm very careful about the water that I put in, so I know the water I'm putting in is the exact parameters of the water I'm taking out. And so uh, the drastic, there is no drastic change. So I'm... I feel confident I can do a 20% once a week and uh, not do two times a week at 10%. And so um, so that's just my spiel on uh, TDS and water changes. Um, next week I'm going to talk more about 
three things I think are vital to a successful shrimp tank and what's in it. And so um, I hope this video helped you guys. If you guys have more questions, feel free to leave comments. And I can always do another video talking about your comments. So thanks for watching, guys. And until next time, have a great week.